Today's recipe request is a video on how to make chocolate hummus. I'd not heard of this before, and it's actually pretty darn good. I mean, it's pretty weird and quirky, but it is tasty. So this is how you do it. Remember, I'm self-taught, so if I can make it, you definitely can, so give it a go too. This, my friends, is a chickpea, also known as a garbanzo bean. You see that name quite a lot. It's quite a common alternative. Uh, Egyptian pea and many other names. It's a legume and stereotypically for me, and I think it's fair to say quite a lot of other people, they're quite boring. I know some of you are gonna be like, no, chickpeas are amazing. And I'm starting to agree with you. I have one subscriber in particular who's like obsessed uh, with chickpeas. And when you think of them, like you try and understand the taste of a chickpea and it's like, Nah, it tastes of like nothing. But that's great because it can be flexible, we can use it for sweet and savory, and it's very popular in hummus, you know, like savory hummus, uh, but we're gonna use it, as you've already seen, uh, to make chocolate hummus. Let's go. This is a recipe I was sent in by Lucy uh, by email, so thanks for this. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone, it's something I wouldn't really do, but it just sounded so quirky, I wanted to do it. Now this is four dates in here, they kind of look a bit sinister and like alien eggs. What we're gonna do is soak them in water for about 20 minutes just to soften them up so they'll be easier to pit and whiz up. So we're just gonna leave that for 20 minutes. So this gives you time to get all your other ingredients ready, but if you've done that like I have, uh, you can just play with your pug, okay? Everyone has to get a pug now, that's mandatory. All of our ingredients are gonna get whizzed together in our trusty uh, food processor. Now one ingredient actually is almond butter. Now if you follow me on Snapchat, you would have seen that I was in a supermarket, completely freaked out, I didn't know what it was, uh, but it is just like peanut butter. Although a little bit more like concrete, it wants to grip to my teeth. Mm. But I found it, I did originally look down the butter aisle uh, for butter with almonds in it. No, it's in your peanut butter aisle and it's not too bad. All right, so we might as well go ahead and put all the other ingredients in other than the dates just while they're finishing off soaking. So let's pour in the chickpeas. Now these are drained off chickpeas for even less flavor. Tablespoon of coconut oil, which is all the rage at the moment. Pinch of flaky salt. Good drizzle of maple syrup, about a tablespoon of that. Give it some sweetness, baby. Uh, this is 75 grams of that almond butter, which is about a quarter of a cup. And four tablespoons to obviously make that chocolate effect of cocoa powder. I've not done many recipes in the past with dates, but as you can see, I've managed to get a stone out. And the good thing about soaking these is it kind of like hydrates them, okay? And you can sort of squeeze them. Um, <laughs> My house phone is ringing. Hang on a sec. Oh, sorry, Mel, you're working. Is Becky there? Uh, she's gone out for the day with her friends. Oh, that's what I just want to know whether she wants a recipe if I was in Asda, but that's okay. Ah, right, okay, no worries. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, look, what you can do is uh, squeeze, and look, it's just like you're almost giving birth uh, to the stone in the middle. Look, so that just pops out really nice, back in there. So we're gonna get our four dates all, um, I guess, let them become mothers. There we go, that's our four stones out of the way. We'll get them to one side, our dates in there. Don't worry if you make a mess of them. They're only gonna get whizzed up anyway. Speaking of which, let's do that right now. So in go are stoned dates. Don't worry if they're like not bone dry. I think the moisture will actually help it, especially get that cocoa powder working. Uh, let's get our lid on Ugh, and whiz it up. Right, blender attachment on. Let's see if this works. It is working, it's just gonna take a while to break stuff down. I'm gonna keep going. Alrighty, so it's nearly mixed through now. We need to add a teeny bit of almond milk just to thin it up a bit. Mm. We'll just add like a tablespoon at a time. We might need two or maybe even three tablespoons, depending on the consistency we want. I don't know if you've ever tried hazelnut milk. This is almond milk, we'll just say it's really good, but I love hazelnut milk. I think because it reminds me of Nutella. And it's my massive Nutella pot. See that is whizzing up in there. You probably just can't see it in there, but I really want to get it really nice and fine so we've got a good consistent texture. So keep going until you get that. There we go then friends. So when we're talking about texture, there we go. That is what you're after. Before we serve it up, some shout outs. Last person to follow me on Twitter, Tony Culpin. Last person to like my Facebook page, Rebecca Lane. Instagram, Carl Robson. And Snapchat, Lewis. Next Ori. Right, let's finish this up. So we're just going to grab a board, uh, some strawberries. You can slice these up if you like. And then get in, I guess, what you would normally put plain hummus in. Just a nice little ramekin. And just pushing the hummus into the ramekin to serve. Mm. 
There's something about it. I like it, it's quirky, but it does taste good. You have got to give this recipe a go. If you try the recipe, don't forget to send me a picture on social media and follow me for behind the scene bits and bobs. Uh, subscribe for regular fun food videos and let me know down below what you wanna see next. Also, let me know if you prefer this whole real-time cooking thing. I know a lot of you are big fans of that, hence why I did it in this style today. I'm still waiting about the microphone issue, but I just wanted to do it today. So um, that's it, guys. I'll see you next time.